Good morning, everyone. This is Mita and Tosh, and welcome to the Q&A sessions. Hi, Tosh, how are you doing? Good morning, Mita. Doing good, doing good. Yourself? Yeah, really well, thank you. I think we're having some technical challenges with people getting on today, so it's very possible that we, this is going to be going out as a recording rather than a, a live session. But uh, I think it's going to be useful either way, Mita. Yeah. You know, I, I, this is one of the topics that a lot of people are dealing with. They don't address it. Yeah, you know yeah. what you know what they say to themselves. They say, "Oh, it's just the nature of the market, isn't it?" I just can't find the right people. You know, yeah. it's like everyone resign to it. They they don't think that they can do put things in place to change that. And it's very interesting because I'm in the talent attraction and retention space. You are in the employment law and HR strategic space for clients. And actually, you said to me, Mita, this is the number one problem that organizations are facing and we've got to talk about it and yet I was explaining to you that unfortunately there's a real um, uh, inertia to jumping onto sessions like this because nobody thinks these problems can be solved within 30 minutes you know and actually it's about making small changes not reinventing the wheel but bringing one or two things into your world that can help with your overall challenge. I mean, I've got some real uh, practical uh, questions I'm going to put to you actually during this session. I mean, yeah. you know, I'm looking to recruit right now. Yeah. And I've got theories about why we're not finding people uh, yeah. at the moment. Uh, and, and maybe that's what people are experiencing. And you, in your expertise, I think will give us, give me some, as a guinea pig, will give us all some ideas on what should we be doing? What are we missing? What am I not seeing uh, that, that is, is, is making people not click or ring or do whatever it is they need to do to apply, you know? Yeah, and I can openly and honestly say that as an employer that will have done all of the stages that we recommend, what we had done pre-pandemic is not working now and we are having to revisit our strategy, our approach. It is probably the toughest market for us to recruit into our sector and it's because so many people have left our sector in the talent attraction space because for 15 months no one was really hiring. Yeah. So yeah. it's um, every... Anyone on today's session or watching this after in a recording will bring their own unique set of problems. But usually there's a handful of solutions that will work for anyone. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, I'm really keen to do this. I think I think this will be very practical. You know, it's all well and good talking about the problems we're facing on, on finding people and then theorizing about why that's happening. Yeah. But I, I actually think means you're the best person to give us a good idea. You know, we don't know everything in these no. things because a lot of it is just it's so it's so um, it's sort of fluid. Uh, you know, we're we're adapting with the changes that are going on. But I think you can give us the best chance of of succeeding in this in this area, right? Well, there's 25 years of experience uh, from my side anyway, and never we always say this whether it was the dot com bubble burst in 2000 or the pandemic now in in 2020. You know, and the 20 years in between, there's been all kinds of environments where talent attraction is challenged whether it's a really boom market or where there's, you know, a, a growth spurt or whether, you know, where candidates can really create uh, their own, uh, you know, where candidate is king and they can ask for the biggest salaries. You know, there's always a challenge, which is why we're here today and which is why consultancies like ours are, are, are in business, you know. So as much as we are frustrated by the challenges, that is also what we're doing is bringing the solution. So we're looking at three areas. Yeah, so we've got three specific things we want to address. The first one is how to make sure your shop window is fit for purpose. And you said to me, what's the shop window? Yeah, <laughs> well, what is that? For the mannequin. So we'll talk about that. Uh, the second thing was how to attract the best talent for your world. Yeah. So shop window is, I suppose, a sort of... Um, passive approach of always having if somebody happens to come across you what that says about you and then attracting is when you actually want to go out there and bring talent in so two different parts of that process and the third thing we've got is how to avoid the costly mistakes of hiring the wrong person i mean these things are all interrelated they're not they're not being yeah, expensive one it, connects to the other right it's actually a cycle because everything you do in the hiring will impact the people you retain and everything you do in retention will impact the people you're hiring. So it's a symbiotic relationship. And the biggest challenge of making costly mistakes is that apparently, and if you think about what goes into rehiring someone when the first person was wrong, it's something like three times annual salary. Because you're not just looking at replacing one person for another, you're looking at the time it's taken to find that person in the first place, whether you're advertising, 
the phone calls, the interviews, the internal team, the induction. We've got a whole training program around the first 100 days because, you know, everyone knows that when you hire someone, you always talk about the, you know, you don't you don't get the real person in an interview. You get the best version of them in an interview. Yeah. But in that first 100 days, you're going to see every element of that person. So really making sure that 100 days is building trust, confidence and uh, advocacy for each other in each other's worlds rather than that's not what I expected or this isn't what I expected. But again, to get those first 100 days right, you've got to make sure your process for bringing people is right. So yeah. um, this is something we created right at the start of the pandemic. We created a masterclass with 40 videos that gives everyone a 10 to 15 minute little coaching session on the whole Talent360 life cycle. Because right now we, and you spoke about it, you're finding it hard to hire, we're finding it hard to hire. And therefore, first and foremost, look after the people you've got, right? The low hanging fruit, make sure that you retain the people well. And they're your ambassadors. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You've got to keep your house in order. And it means, and it means it's a combination, I think, in my experience of, treating it like family and a high performance team, whatever that combo you're going to, you're going to, you're going to work at. Uh, that, that's that's where the culture and strategic objectives and the sweet spot where they join. And everyone knows that, it's, you know, it's all very well having that on a piece of paper in a boardroom, but actually do you eat, live and breathe it as an organization? So the, yeah. the challenge is Tosh for anyone watching, if they are a blank canvas and they're a new company starting up, they can sit down and they can write their 360 plan and they can say, right, from day one, this is how we're going to do it. When you've already got a moving train or a move, like they talk about a ship, it takes four miles to turn a ship. That's the thing about recruitment and talent attraction and retention. So what I would say is you're not here to reinvent the wheel. You're here to refine certain elements of your organizational approach to talent attraction and retention. And even those elements will make a difference because it's a bit of a compound effect. It's a lot of psychology, isn't it? It's getting into people's heads and understanding the way they tick, what helps them make decisions, what makes yeah. them what, what makes them make choices, you know. Yeah. Once you understand that um, and understand the way the kind of people you want and what you need to do to attract those people, that's kind of the formula. So you, you know the way this works, uh, everybody. We uh, put any questions, any challenges you're facing right now, please put it in the chat. Yeah. Well, while we are here, we will answer any situations you're dealing with right now. We'll we'll deal with them during this live, uh, yeah. live webinar. And uh, if we miss any at the end, for some reason, we've run out of time, we will still follow up video as well. So please do ask. This is an interactive webinar designed to help you. There's no other purpose for this, right? Absolutely. And it's, 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 it's a complimentary service that we're offering our network in these ever-changing and fast-changing environments. So... People can feel very alone when they're working and not have anyone to ask. So this is where you go and think, well, I'm not quite sure what to do here. Or this is what I'm thinking, but does that make sense? So we can be your sounding board. We've got a poll going at the moment asking whether it's talent attraction and recruitment. That's your challenge around people or talent retention and motivation. So if you are if you haven't put your um, uh, opinion of that into the poll, please do. And we'll publish that at the end. At the moment, it's a hundred percent around talent recruitment and attraction, which is what you said, wasn't it, Josh? Yeah, yeah, that, that's what clients have been saying to me. Certainly, just can't find the right people. That's the yeah. sentence. Just can't find it. Well, maybe you're not looking in the right places. So, should we should we get stuck in? We're gonna. This is gonna be about a 30, 40 minute. We we'll finish at yeah. half past twenty two. Yeah. So the first question, um, Ita, was how to make your make sure your shop windows fit for purpose. What yeah. Well, you know, I was actually on Oxford Street yesterday and I drove past Selfridges and I drove past Harvey Mix. And, you know, you look into an organization and you see these, the, you know, you, you look into how do you look into a business or, you know, an organization's world? They don't have a shop window. You don't see who they are from from driving past them. You look at their website. You look at their social media. You look at any videos on YouTube. You get an understanding of what makes that organization tick by their online presence. The shop window essentially is a passive way of attracting customers, whether those, you know, any stakeholder to your world, whether it's a candidate, potential client, new employees, you know. So, so your shop window in this case is all about having that consistency throughout your world. So first of all, the language that you use on your website, make sure it reflects your culture. If you don't have a culture, 
work on putting a culture in place. We have a, you know, we have, we have training sessions around that as well. And if you do have a culture and you haven't put it in your shop window, then you're missing a massive trick. But how can you bring that to life? Well, you can do videos. You can do a video of an employee talking about their personal uh, employment journey with your organization. Or you could do a, hey guys, come and work for us because, and you can do a little montage of, of, of clips. And this doesn't have to be expensive. You know, a lot of companies say, we don't have the time or we don't have the money, but this can be an iPhone point and shoot. You know, another another way to describe it, and tell me if I've got if I'm on the right same page with you, is like the halo effect. It's getting all those things around you correct, so yeah. that everybody thinks you're that person. So giving the perception of that, and then delivering us that, so you yeah. really are that person. A little yeah. bit like you know, if I was going to give the analogy of a lawyer, you know, I can sit there with a you know with this this t-shirt on, and maybe even I don't know, maybe a pair of shorts on, uh, and I'll be the same lawyer in flip flops as I would be in a suit. But at the same time, maybe the perception is you need to see somebody who looks professional and looks in a certain way in a certain time, you know, maybe it's a bespoke suit, maybe their business card looks that way, maybe the website looks that way. Yeah. So you can use that analogy in here, it's just getting all those things around you, right? Yeah. So it's the halo effect. So everybody yeah. sees you as that person and you are that person. Indeed. And, that it's it's talking about. and when it's an organization that could be anything from 20 to 200 or, or even bigger, it's about making sure that you've got each layer consistent. And ref a true yeah. reflection because your shop window is saying, hey, hey, we, we, we're all about apples. And then that person comes in and all you do is talk about pears. They're going to lose the confidence yeah. in, in yeah. the story. So they, they, even though it might be the job they want in the okay. sector they want, they're not what you thought you, you said, you know, what they're not. They're, you're not what they thought you were. And therefore, they will just lose trust and faith in you as an organization. If you can't get your message consistent, how are you going to look after them in their career? You know, I think, I think Nita, certainly that's been my experience of working with you for however many years we've known each other now, is it starts from inside. Uh, because then you're, you're not having to think about it. It's, it's core. It's, you're already, you, know, you, might, you know, most people don't go around thinking, what are my core values? You know, what really makes matters to me? But when you start thinking about those things and you start to operate with those things in mind, it's actually quite easy if that's what you're thinking about as in a principles, you know, key principles on a day to day basis or what mm -hmm. have you. And then it's about people finding people who are aligned with those same things. Right. Yeah. What kind of values are we talking about? How do we how do companies get those things set out in the first place? You know, find I, the people that tracks, uh, I mean, you know, culture is, you know, they say culture, eat strategy for breakfast, all these buzzwords. But actually what it's about is establishing who you are as a people and what you stand for as a people. Now, no employee is going to tell you what you do and why you do it, right? Because at the end of the day, yeah. they have to work for an organization that has a vision and a dream. So the why of, of the organization comes from, from, from the, the establishment. But then the, the, the who's and the how's and the personal why's of the individual have to align with the organizational why. And that essentially is culture. So again, if you can't define the, the organizational why, the organizational values, then you're not going to be able to attract people that are in the same um, uh, mindset. How did, you, how did you come up with your organizational values? So, how, how, yeah. how, how, how back are we talking about now? Are we, are we stretching it a bit? How well, you know, a cultural exercise is as simple as, and I'm sure I've mentioned this before on these sessions, is getting everyone into a group of between, you know, maybe five, maximum 10. So if you're a small organization, you can do it as a team around a table. If you're a large organization, you can break it down into five groups. And everyone sits there and answers two questions. Number one, who they value in their world and why. So it could be Einstein. It could be your mom. It could be a next boss. It could be, you know, someone on, on it could be Elon Musk. You know, I don't know, three people. Yeah. And it's the why they value them. Is it um, inspiration? Is it support? Is it, um, is it you know, being a trailblazer? Is it the trust? Is it the accountability? You know, there's so many words that people will come up with that you as an employer wouldn't even think of. But when you pull three times three, so nine words from each individual, you're left with about 100 words. And what you'll find, actually, you probably only have about 10 to 15 words. You'll have patterns. Yeah. And then what you look at are the ones that are most popular. Now, it's so easy to do that. You put it on an Excel spreadsheet and you work, put a, an, an, or a, word, a word document and you create an iCloud from it, a, a word cloud, and the more frequent words come up bigger. Isn't that clever? You know, you know what else I noticed, because I've done that exercise too, Amita, is that um, people interpret the same word differently. 
So yeah. you talk about so it. I say, I believe in trust. Well, hang on, what does that mean for you? Because something, or I believe in honesty. Yeah. Or what level of honesty? Because some people think that's honest or other people think other things are honest or, or they don't mind being dishonest within a certain parameters of honesty. Yeah. I don't know what that means, right? So, so understanding with clarity what those words mean and really nailing those yeah. down really helps a lot as well. You know, when I did the exercise with my people. Yeah. And it came up, it came up with stuff that really felt not non-corporate. They felt kind of real. Uh, and well, they felt we're, not, we're, not not we're so, people, we're humans, yeah. we're human beings, yeah. we're humans. And again, our our whys as individuals and our whys as an organization is is you know, the reason we go to work. But then what actually, as you said, you know, it's not always just the money. What motivates us, and, and, and I've put retention and motivation in the same space because they're completely linked. Yeah. Someone's not motivated yeah. to work, they won't do their best job and eventually your path will go like that. So it's keeping everyone in parallel, you know, whether it's 10 or 100, everyone all facing in the same direction, moving towards a common goal. And we're kind of slipping into the second question about how to attract the best talent for your world because the yeah. making sure the shop window is right is is all about walking the talk and talking the walk or whichever well, way that matters. The right. window is your website, the language, uh, a work for us page, videos, things that bring that your your because everyone knows what you're like internally and they love it. But how do you show the world that? So get get yourselves out there, Instagram. Yeah, yeah. I don't think our business has ever picked up a candidate or a client from Instagram. But what people do is when they hear about the main group, they check yeah, out on LinkedIn and they check us out on Instagram. And what that yeah. does is it builds a picture of our world. That's it. But once you come to attracting talent, that is when you're actively going after people because you have, yes. a, you have a talent strategy. Your, your, your organization is that A, you need five uh, ta- you know, types of administrators and you need five types of fundraisers, let's say. You've got job descriptions and you've got salary packages and you've got a training program and you need to be at this point by this time in the line, you know, this, this time. How do you get from a boardroom saying we need these 10 people to having those people on? Well, sadly, it's not as simple as putting an advert out, fielding responses, doing an interview and boom, there are the people. Why? Because of all the external factors impacting all of these people, are you are you demonstrating yourself and putting your advert out there in a way that's going to attract like-minded, diverse, engaged people with the right skills? No, you may attract one or two, but you'll probably attract two to three hundred who have got nothing to do with the job. So, how do you use your time wisely? Because it's like an eagle in a haystack right now. I really I've got a question for you, Mita. Yeah. So, what do you think that and this is just the theory, it's certainly a discussion I have with a couple of other employers that were struggling with the recruitment market at the moment. Um, um, what is it that, that, do you not think at the moment that people just don't want to be looking for another job? They're in a secure position. The last thing they want to do is now test the water somewhere else. Uh, things are working quite well, probably. And, you know, one, one of my clients says, you don't really want to be people, looking for people who are on the job market. Because why are they looking in the first place, which is a bit harsh. <laughs> but, but, but you see what I'm, I said? Yeah. I the point, the point is, is they want to be recruiting people and headhunting for people who are secure in these places and people just don't want to move. Yeah. Which means, um, what, what do you, how are you finding that? Yeah. Is that what you're this, is, this is why you need recruitment partners. This is why you need an internal recruitment team. Depends on your size, depends on your hiring plans and strategies. Everyone does it differently. Some of our clients have their own internal team and we we double up on the work they're doing or we help them with specific roles. Some of our clients have no one internal apart from a member of HR who's fielding the you know the, in, the interview process. And other organizations have a policy where they only push it out. Everyone's different, but get your world in order that your funnel of talent coming in is as broad as possible so that you've got your personal adverts out there as an organization bear in mind will you have the time to respond to those people that apply for the job and if you don't what does that say about your organizations yeah the next step is ask your network you know who do you know and ask your employees who do you know create a little incentive that if you find someone for our organization and they make it past the six month probation we give three to 500 pounds. And what I'm looking at is the talent attraction world, our environment, recruiting talent, because what we will do is we will talk to network, we will advertise and we will headhunt because we always say good people are not out there looking for a job. Yep. Because even if a good person was looking, they'll be snapped up within days. And right now, 
they've been snapped up within hours. Last week, Josh, we registered 20, and this is just from this morning, we, we registered 20 tenths for uh, from bookings we had this week. And of those 20, only two are now available. And this was in a market where we didn't even have 20 tenths, going from hundreds of tenths to like something like 10 in the pandemic. And now everything's starting to build, but the demand for people, it way outweighs, as you said, the availability because furlough, and that's ending in the end of September, so that might make a difference. Yeah. Yes, it will. The trust that if people aren't in a job, why? I think there's more openness to that at the moment because of the pandemic. A lot of companies had to just shed, you know, cost and they, that the quickest way was to let go of people. So there are people out there that want to reskill and it's important to look at your business, not in a, or your role, not in a, this is the job that needs doing, but actually these are the competencies we're looking for and these are the skills we're looking for. And then actually thinking about who might be right for that, not the title. So what, what is it you think that the people that are searching for a job are not applying or are not saying, I suppose that's how far you, you spread your net and, and the people that are in the secure job, what is it you think that's going to make them want to take, take a shift and say, oh, you know what, that's, that's different or that's something I've been doing. What are people looking for? Is, is it just the stability now? Well, I think in the, main, look, in the main, we are hopefully at the tail end of a very difficult couple of years. But we also know that the world isn't predictable and it wasn't predictable before, but it's now even less predictable. So, yes, in a market where, you know, people coming out of university would be in one job and then hop and hop and hop. Now they've been caught out where they can't find another job. So all of a sudden security has gone up. Another another thing that's really changed is that, you know, people coming out of university wanted this, you know, this environment with all of the uh, bells and whistles, the Google, you know, campus type vibe. And now we're getting university leavers saying, I want to work from home 24 <laughs> seven. And employers are saying, well, how are you going to learn? How are, you going to up yeah. are you getting some feedback from me? No, 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 you're a little bit blurry, but I think I, it was me last week, so I think it might be me again, I'm not oh, sure. No. No, well, I, you look all right to me, so hopefully we're both we're both still in, in the picture. Um, okay. You know, so so the, there's so many reasons, what it's about, there's so many reasons, and, you know, it's a little bit, of, it's a little bit like any relationship is built on matching the right person for your world. Now, if it's if you're dating someone and you end up dating the wrong person, you break up. If you hire the wrong person, they're going to leave. So rather than hire on a whim, um, have a plan, have a strategy. And then you, you you put your shop window out there in an advert. You know, are you uh, motivated by this 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 a mission that we're, you know, we're pushing out there? This is our mission. Does it resonate with you? If it does, people will apply. Rather than saying we are looking for, you know, head of procurement, say, you know, does getting the best value for money you know, give you a little buzz when you get get a good outcome, you know, and people are like, yeah, actually it does. I'm always looking for a good deal. Me so I was talking to you before we started this webinar about um, that book called Good to Great by Jim Collins. And one of the things in there it was talking about was uh, first who, then what, which, which basically means that if your business is a bus, it's who you have on the bus that matters more than the direction. Because if you've got the right people on the bus, it won't matter what direction you're going in because and you can change direction because you've already got the right people on the bus. And I, I like the the theory of these things, let's see how practical they are, but it makes a lot of sense because it's not the mission that, that matters unless, of course, that mission connects to your values, yeah. which is something that the company and the employees are aligned with in the first place. Yeah. That's what we're really talking about. It's the psychology of it and understanding the layers deeper than just looking at the face value of it and yeah. understanding of that and implementing it that will make all the difference. So it's really finding out the, the who, who is it you want on your bus, you know, in the first place, right? Yeah, and, and it's interesting you say that because for us as an organization, we came into the pandemic doing 80% attraction and 20% retention through training, advisory and things like that. So we were very much a talent attraction aid consultancy and everything we did was to recruit people. So all of our team knew us as recruiters. But during the pandemic, we've evolved into helping our clients retain. So for a lot of our team, they're, they're thinking, well, we've gone from attraction to now training, advisory, consultancy, but because they understand that all we're trying to do is to help great people find 
create jobs that they can stay in and help great organizations be the best that they can be by having the right people on the bus, then they get why the recruitment is, is as important as the training, which is as important as the advisory, you know, and therefore no one sort of said, well, this isn't what I signed up for because everyone signs up to create success for the organization, uh, for the people that, that, that they you know, touching and connecting and, and facilitating success for. So do you find that people are still looking for people with skill sets rather than talking to you about the profile of the person they want? 100%. The first thing... And is it the wrong way around? The, yeah. The first thing an employer will say when they're looking for someone is, we need someone to do this. So what I talk about is the jigsaw puzzle. So rather than saying, this is the piece I'm looking for, what I do is I say, right, paint me the picture. Tell me about the organization. What are your long-term goals? What are your short-term goals? Who are the people in your world? And by the end of it, we have a piece that's missing. And that shape is the shape of who they need. So it's almost looking at the outcome of the organization. Because usually if you're hiring someone on a piece of paper and that piece of paper was defined a few years ago, or you may have even just refined it, unless yeah. you have the a real kind of coaching uh, approach of, of not just who, but what was your thing? Not the not the hows, but the who. First the who, then the what. Yeah, right. So the the who needs is 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 the person based on the organisational direction. The what is you know head on or junior yeah. this. You know, so we talk not just about skill set. We talk about competencies. We talk about the person spec. We talk about experience. We talk about future because the halo of a successful employee is not just can they do the job. If that was simple, none of us would be in, in, in you know in a in business because everything would go perfectly. Absolutely. That might be what opens the door. They're looking at the package. Yeah. And then when they get involved in there, it's a different it's a different thing. Yeah. You used yeah. the analogy of a relationship before. I mean it's the same thing, isn't it? What? Um so, really? so you start it's only when you start to get involved in it and you start yeah. to get different things or yeah. different things yeah. that keep you there, right? The most important thing I would say anyone to take away from this webinar today is consistency authenticity and consistency which is whether it's your shop window i.e., your website whether it's your advert or it's your interview process and then your induction and management of the person in your organization make it authentic make it consistent and that's how you build trust right you build trust by doing what you say you're going to do when you tell somebody it's going to rain tomorrow and it rains tomorrow, they're like, wow, this person's really trustworthy. You know, so in your organization, if you if you tell them something's going to happen, make sure it happens. If you tell them this is who we are, then show who you are. So it's about consistency and authenticity. And uh, Chris is in today saying he agrees completely. That we must move the JD away from a list of tasks to a more person focused description. Absolutely. Core competencies to come later on in the discussion. You know what, 100%, because actually the right the right people will naturally have the competencies and then it's about prioritizing the competencies of what's important. It's the old, you know, you can teach abilities, you can't teach attitude type of scenario, isn't it? And, and, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that rings true. Yeah. But when you, we were talking here about, you know, how to attract the best talent for your world and all those things we were talking about, I suppose it relies to attraction and retention. Yeah, uh, and and, and uh, before we move on to the, the you know the cost of hiring a mistake, um, and I suppose what is the number one thing that attracts and keeps people? I mean, in my experience, it's some sort of progress, development, whether that's self development, professional. It isn't just money. I don't. It isn't necessarily um, uh, you know a, a higher pay packet, but so, so many different elements that are involved in there. Yeah. What, what, what would you say are the top two or three things that okay. people want people to stay yeah. and I think consequently wanted to will attract them as well in the first place. And I'm glad you said top two or three rather than one, because as I said, it's the halo of what makes that best fit. So I would say definitely we're looking at the role and what the organization does. Does that person want to do what they do for that, that, that world, that organization? Number two, salary. Absolutely, people have cost of living they have responsibilities and commitments and they want and for some people money is a motivator not for everyone for some people money is a primary motivator number three is what else 
some people want an opportunity to grow in an organization. They want to know that there's no ceiling on, right, I've done my two years and I'm off. They want to know that there's progress. For others, they just want to know that they're going to have access to so much variety that they can hone a great set of skills and be more marketable. So does your brand have a good reputation? Glassdoor, really important now as a hirer. Have a Glassdoor um, account. Have your people grade you really hoping your people will grade you strongly. Um, if not, then why not? So, you know, as I said, this cycle of um, attraction and retention and it continuing in a consistent, successful way is feedback. So get feedback from your existing employees. Why did you join? What, what was as you expected? What wasn't? You know, uh, perception is reality. It's really as simple as that sometimes, isn't it, to ask them? Yeah. And so a good organisation will have little touch points throughout the year, which then feeds into the hiring, which then feeds into the retention, which then feeds into the appraisal process. And this is the challenge, as I said, you know, if you've got a blank canvas and say, right, this is the main, this is our world and this is our talent 360 process, you can write it from scratch. You could probably take our masterclass, superimpose it and then fill in your values, what you do and the process. But if you've already got a moving organisation, where do you start? Well, you look at where your challenges are. So that's why I asked in the poll, is your challenge in attraction or reten attraction and recruiting or retention and motivation? And actually we've got three quarters saying recruitment and attraction and some are saying retention and motivation. And can you imagine after doing all of that work around the shop window, the advert, the money, the recruitment partners, the advertising, the feedback, and remember, as an organization, we've got to let everyone you'd say no to uh, why you're saying no, because it's your brand. We want people to walk away saying, you know what, I'm really gutted I didn't get that job, but I would really recommend that organization to someone else, not they treated me badly, right? Because yeah. I'm, I'm a real believer in what you put out there comes back to you, you know? So, so, so really engage and embark with uh, you know your best practice and, and best intentions. Um, and people will pick that up. That's the authenticity. Um, and the retention, imagine after doing all of that, you bring the person in and they look at look around and they're like, this isn't what I expected, and they're gone. I mean, it's heartbreaking and soul destroying. So yeah. what people look for is that what they came in for is there on day one and so on and so forth. And they, they build that trust because what we said as an organization is going to be the job, the work, the people, the, the potential, the, the, the rewards. All of that is what's happening. And when things go wrong, communicate it. Don't bury your head in the sand and think, oh, they won't care. Yeah. And that's why exit interviews are so important. I'm a firm believer in exit interviewing everyone because whether they're a junior or the most senior person in the organization, they see it from a perspective that the organization won't have. But there's things to learn at the ground at shop floor level, if I can put it that way, yeah. uh, which you can always improve on, which again helps with retention, right? Tosh, you know, when you said, How do we retain people? I said, Let's look at why people leave, you know? Yeah. So yeah. understanding yourself as an organization and, you know, using your lawyer analogy, if you're out there with flip flops and everyone's expecting a suit and tie, but you don't realize, and I know it's a silly one, but people won't, yeah. there'll be something in your world depending on your challenges. And that's where we're helping our clients now. We don't just say, yes, what are your challenges? This is a solution. We say, tell us about what works, what doesn't work. Tell us about who in your organization. And, you know, personality testing is huge because you can personality profile the people that are right in your organization and get a map for what good looks like. And then when you hire, you can personality profile them and do some matching. Yeah, which, which brings us nicely to our last bit, which was about the, the costly mistakes. And, I, and this doesn't just mean financials. No. And I wanted to say, put something out there before we start this, which is, my idea that there are no such thing as accidents. You know, there's always a reason behind it. There's always cause and effect. You know, yeah. the, the phrase, you know, oh, it's just the way the ball bounces. Well, it depends on how you throw that ball. Yeah. It depends on the texture of the ball. It depends on the, the texture yeah. of, the, of the floor that it's striking and the angle and all those things. So it's not yeah. an accident. It happened because of a set of reasons. Yeah. So when yeah. you're hiring badly, you kind of need to think about how do we get there in the first place? What was the, pro where, and that means all the different elements that I know you're going to talk about in a minute, 
but which is about the, the, the profile, the interview questions, the alignment, not just saying these are our values. Do you agree with them? Well, of course they're going to say yes. You know, yeah. I said what you were saying, what I said before was a Chris Rock thing. You know, you never meet the real person at the interview. You meet the best representation of them, right, at the first yeah. interview. Yeah. So then it's going to be the course of time. And guess what happens then as a business owner? I think we've all done it at one point or another. You then think they get that little feeling in your gut. Yeah, and you should listen to that feeling. And that gut feeling says, oh, I think I made a bit of a mistake here. And what do you do? You don't say, yep, forget that, right, let's start again. You say, right, well, I made a decision now, I'm gonna go with it. And I'm gonna try and turn this around and you give yourself a lot of pain. And you keep going until you've had enough. Now, now maybe there's a story where it turns around. I don't hear that all that often because normally you can't get that feeling and then it, and then it you know, we've been in business long enough to kind of know or get the instincts about those sorts of things. Well, do you know what? And in business, we can't, I know, you know, the Warren Buffetts of the world have made a lot of money, what looks like gut instinct, but it's not. It's informed gut instinct, i.e. Yeah. they have read thousands of pages of financials before their gut is finely tuned. And so as a business owner, our gut can't just go on subjective feeling. It's got to have a point of reference of the, the objectives as well. So when you've got objectives and you've got consistency, in your process, your shop window, your adverts, your hiring process, the interviews, who interviews, you know, uh, everyone also from a diversity and inclusivity perspective, we've got to have a real consistency to ensure that everyone gets the same chance to ensure because we know that diverse organizations are more successful. So that's where for us as recruiters at the moment, we're doing a lot in not just making sure we find the right talent, but we're opening up the world to more diversity for more success. It's, so it's, it's really important to understand also that, you know, the wrong person could be toxic for a work environment. You know, everybody's watching. And if somebody's not pulling their weight or they're getting away with something for whatever reason they're being allowed to do that, as you know, because again, we want to stand by our decision as a business owner, whatever else it is, it can have a really negative impact on the rest of the people. You know, I mean, the flip side of that, me too, is I've had people that are the best salespeople in the team number one salesperson but they're the most toxic and the employers will let them get away with it yeah. because they're bringing the money in but you know what a lot of those times when it's become intolerable and that person has been exited everybody else steps up yes yeah. so it's really important to understand the effects of really getting the recruitment process right from you thinking about the profile talking to you about those sorts of things yeah. to getting the job advert right to getting the interview right to getting your shop front window right all of those things are so massively interrelated very much so. We talk about the one bad apple, a bit like a black hole. It absorbs everything into its into its orbit, and everyone else is left hanging. So it's a really good point, Joellen. Hi, Joellen. Good to see you here. You have a comment. Yes. You wonder. I wonder how many people out there are facing what we're facing at Impact Factory. We know at some point we will need to recruit new people, and it's now imperative to assess where we are and where we want to go and what we need to support that. At the same time, we're all so tired and dealing with the day-to-day -day that we're struggling to find the necessary time to call back and look at what we actually need, a little bit like Catch-22, working in the business versus working on the business. And what I would suggest, and this is how we do this in our organization, this is how we run sessions for our clients, is mini strategy sessions. So get everyone to do a mini business plan. What's gone well? And it's a really hard time to reflect because the last 12 months haven't been normal, but actually there will be wins that have been achieved in that time. And again, within each team, I do no more than sort of three to five people in this process, each member of that organization will have found different wins. And then from those wins, they'll talk about where they want to take their role. And when you all get together and you do a goal, actions, SWOT analysis, and looking at what, what your outcomes are, and you pick two or three really important areas to focus on, and then you delegate those areas and you've left the room, Everyone will take accountability because it's everyone facing in the same direction, understanding the whys of where you're going as an organization. And I've just flown through that. But if that's something you're interested, interested in talking to me about, I can walk you through that because it's really powerful and it helps whether it's a team of two or three or an organization of, of 50. You know, you do it at team level and it helps everyone face in the same direction. I want to address something specifically Joanne and said in there, which is about tired and dealing with the day-to-day -day and we're struggling to find the necessary time to pull back yeah. and look at what we actually need i can't tell you how important it is to take time to manage your time yeah uh, as ironic as that might sound you know meter you, you and i were talking about this as well 
just step back from the uh, the chaos or yeah. you know get into the eye of the storm whatever it is wherever the yeah. calm bit is just just to get that space that doesn't mean you have to go and sit in this in your office go for a walk whatever yeah. it takes you want to gets you thinking about stuff do some exercise take a morning off where you're just going to start writing down some things you want to work through don't do it on your own joe sit sit, sit with somebody else because you know when you have an interactive thought process you only think the way you think the yeah. ideas will bounce off each other to overcome those challenge changes but i can't tell you how important it is to make time to manage your time if you don't do that it'll just have a ripple a ripple effect on everything else you're doing yeah. you're just, it just, it's just like it'll just keep staying there without ever getting resolved. So yeah. do that. So as a closing, because we're at 40 minutes and we said we try and keep it succinct today. In in closing, what I would say is that if anyone out there who is embarking on, same as us, refining your talent attraction, retention and development strategy, start with some reflection. And your reflection for your organisation will be the perception of who you are. So start with doing an engagement uh, uh, survey, whether you're asking previous candidates, you might not get a lot of response, but you might get some good stuff. You interviewed with us. Why did you not take the role? Or, it, you know, start with the people in your organization. Why do you work for this organization? What's important to you? Um, look at people that have gone if you have great relationships. Get somebody to spend a couple of hours talking to a few people. See if it builds a picture that then means you know where you need to focus on those one or two changes that are going to help you attract talent for the future and always be hiring even when you're not hiring. And that's been a big challenge for us because during the pandemic, we were all hands on deck. As you said, Joellen, everyone's tired. All the work we did, we continually have this tunnel dried up. So we are really having to start from scratch again, as many are. And, and we're the experts, but we get it. New, new scenarios have meant that we've got to pivot quick. And, and, and that's the trick, isn't it? Knowing where to where to go and what to do. So, Joellen, you just said, I do know all of this. We went from a team of 11 to a team of four and we're all doing so much. Very good advice. That No, I know you do. And this is the challenge, you know. The sessions we have probably don't teach anything new. They just bring, hopefully, some key points to the forefront, which is, I would say, is, is find one or two things to improve on and talk to me. You know, I'm not going to charge. I'm just going to give you my thoughts. Um, and we can help organisations just just start attracting more talent over the long term. And we may not solve that problem today, but we will solve that problem. I going think, I think you're selling yourself short, Mita. What's that? You've, you've told us to think differently about how we recruit. You've told us to look at how we look in our at our profiling. You've told us to think about how we, our shop window is. Yeah. You've told us to think about exactly how we align. We're, we're only you know this is a day or two or three's. Uh, worth of discussion so yeah. so i think you're selling yourself short there i think you've done a lot of new things for us certainly for me to think about as well yes. um, in terms of recruitment and, and, and applying those things in a meaningful way is yeah. what's going to make the difference and i think what i'm saying is don't feel overwhelmed by the hundreds of things that everyone can do pick a few do them really well and it will help you start to improve the challenge of talent attraction i think we're done I think we are. Thank you, everyone. For your, thank you so much for your time and for the subject. And we'll see everyone here at 11 a.m. next Thursday. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.